so it's been a while that we touched the factors chapter. We uh, we left it halfway uh, the week before. So I thought I'll do a quick review of what we have covered so far, and then uh, start with the remaining uh, sections of the of the chapter and uh, get to the exercises as well. Does that uh, make sense? Sure. All right. So, uh, so I think we start with uh, last. I mean, uh, the week before we uh, started the chapter, and we uh, saw that there are three main uh, sections that this chapter deals with. The first one was to create uh, factors. So we talked about how we uh, create uh, how how we can create uh, factors. Uh, the next section talks about modifying uh, the factor orders. So we saw a couple of functions that uh, will help us to modify those uh, the order of uh, the factor variables. And uh, finally, we uh, have this last section we did not start uh, uh, the week before, uh, which deals with modifying factor levels. So how can we uh, kind of club different factor levels? How can we lump them together uh, and uh, things like that? So to do a quick review of the first two uh, sections, uh, factors can be created uh, really easily by uh, using the function factor and then uh, like passing on the argument for levels, which can hold a, a vector of characters that contain uh, these levels. Uh, we also saw that uh, we can sort uh, uh, in the order that you had specified by using the function sort. Uh, some of, in terms of some of the other nuances, we saw that uh, uh, if we, this one was uh, kind of uh, interesting that if we omit the levels uh, argument, uh, then, uh, and, and just say factors x1, uh, it, would, it would take the uh, order, uh, uh, it, it would kind of consider the levels in the alphabetical order uh, of the uh, different uh, kind of uh, values that are present in the in the uh, variable. And uh, we also saw that if we wanted to order the levels to match the order of appearance, for example, if we want our levels to uh, be in the same order of December, April, January, March, uh, then we could do it in two ways. We could use the unique function. So, so uh, within levels, we could uh, say that, okay, unique of X1, uh, that would uh, make the levels uh, appear in the same order in which the, in which the variables are uh, arranged. Or we could use the FCT underscore or factor underscore in order, uh, which does the same thing. And we also saw that if we wanted just to see the levels of a uh, of a factor, we could just use the levels function, and that kind of presents the uh, levels of the of that particular variable. Uh, in terms of modifying factor order, uh, we uh, saw that uh, it it can be useful when we are creating graphs. For example, in the GSS underscore cat dataset, which has uh, a lot of uh, uh, variables uh, like social uh, variables like year, marital status, age, race, income, party ID, etc. Uh, we, uh, if I mean, one example is if we plot a graph with uh, of religion, uh, we have uh, uh, these array like um, uh, we see that uh, these are organized in a very random uh, fashion. Uh, however, if we use functions like FCT underscore reorder or FCT underscore relevel. Uh, or FCT underscore reorder to uh, these are some of the functions that can help us arrange the uh, a factor variable in different uh, ways. Uh, this is an example where we are using factor underscore reorder, which takes two arguments, uh, the variable which needs to be reorganized. Uh, so here in this case, we want to reorganize or reorder the religion variable, and we want to reorder it by another variable, which is the number of let's say TV hours uh that's uh, that's in the in the data set so this uh, orders the variable in a decreasing order or an increasing order depending on uh, where we are looking at uh, of of uh, this the second variable that we have provided uh similarly we uh, look at some of the other uh, options for example factor underscore relevel uh which uh, 
helps us in uh, kind of moving a particular level to the top uh, of the stack. Uh, so for example, we have uh, no answer here or not applicable here if we want, uh, if we kind of uh, specify FCT underscore uh, real level, uh, factor underscore real level, and then say that, okay, we want not applicable to appear uh, on top, uh, it would kind of uh, bring it uh, and if we organize the stack so that not, uh, the vector now starts with not applicable. So that was another example. And then we saw uh, the use of FCT underscore reorder two, uh, which is typically useful in uh, reorganizing uh, lines in a, in a geom underscore line kind of a chart. And we also saw the use of FCT underscore infreq, infreq which uh, is typically useful for bar plots. So if you have a bar plot like this, if we use FCT underscore infrac, it kind of arranges uh, the uh, bar plot in a decreasing order uh, of the values. So this is, I believe, where we uh, stopped last time. And now we, uh, the next section uh, that we uh, wanted to get into this week was uh, to discuss how to modify factored levels. And uh, the book talks about three uh, critical tools that, that, are, that are extremely useful for us when we uh, try to modify uh, these factor levels. Uh, the first one is factor underscore recode. Uh, the second one is factor underscore collapse. And the third one is factor underscore lump. And we would, uh, we'll be looking at each of these uh, functions in quite a bit of detail. So uh, to start with, uh, let's look at an example of where uh, factor underscore recode might be useful. So this is uh, uh, the party ID uh, variable in the GSS underscore cat uh, dataset, which contains the different parties, the different political parties that respondents uh, belonged to. So, uh, so these included, you know, no answer, don't know other party, strong Republican, not strong Republican, independent, near Republican. So we see that it's it's arranged in a in, in quite a uh, quite a number of different uh, levels. Uh, the levels are pretty inconsistent, uh, and uh, this is a good example where we can use factor underscore recode to change some of these levels to make them consistent. Uh, so the way that factor underscore recode works is uh, that we uh, specify the variable that we want to uh, modify or mutate, and on the left hand side of the of this equation, we uh, provide the new level of the factor. So for example, uh, we want, so the, so the original, uh, pardon me, uh, the original uh, level was, let's say, strong Republican and not strong Republican, uh, but we want to recode uh, strong Republican into Republican strong and not STR Republican into Republican weak. So the new level that we want to provide goes on the left hand side of this uh, equation and the original level that was there in the variable is passed on in the right hand side of the equation. And uh, that does it, I think, uh, as, as soon as we do a count of the new party ID variable that we have generated right here, we see that uh, the variable levels have been nicely and consistently decoded into, let's say, Republican strong, Republican weak, or whatever. Uh, uh, kind of uh, values we provided. Uh, one thing of note here uh, is that uh, uh, it's it's pretty uh, the, the the factor underscore recode function works pretty nicely in the sense that uh, we do not need to specify all the old levels and and, and a corresponding new level. Uh, in case we do not uh, specify, for example, we did not say anything about no answer here. So that there was a level called no answer, and we left it untouched it kind of retained the old value. So this is really easy to work with. Uh, say we have 10 levels and we only want to change six of them. We want to uh, let the rest of the four levels remain intact. So we can just let them be. We, we do not need to uh, mention anything about them. Uh, and and uh, the function uh, kind of addresses that. It doesn't change them at all. Uh, it does not ask us for each specific value of um, uh, the old level and a corresponding new level. So that, that was really neat. 
Um, so that was factor recode. Uh, there are other ways to uh, specify factor recode. Uh, so for example, multiple levels can be clubbed together. So for example, we have strong Republican, not strong Republican. Uh, uh, these, I mean, let's say we wanted to club them even a, a little bit uh, more. We wanted all of anything that is either a strong Republican or a not strong Republican into a, into a Republican. Uh, we could uh, do that by, uh, or, or let's say in this example, what we have done is uh, we have no answer and don't know and other parties. So, so uh, we can provide the same new level uh, to three different old levels and it, it works. Uh, so we have uh, said that, okay, uh, code no answer into uh, other, uh, recode don't know into other as well as recode other party into other and that's exactly what it does. Uh, it does not uh, return uh, the older values of no answer, don't know or other party. So this is another cool trick where uh, if we wanted to lump different uh, levels, we could just keep on repeating uh, the same values for the for the new level, and it kind of uh, organizes itself very nicely. Uh, so that that's almost all about uh, factor underscore recode. Uh, so just uh, in a nutshell, I think uh, the way it works is uh, specify the variable uh, that we want to recode, then. Uh, use an equation format with left hand side specifying the new level and the right hand side specifying the old level. Uh, the next function that we have in our toolkit is factor underscore collapse. Uh, this is also a pretty uh, nice function which works very similarly. Uh, it The first argument that it takes is the variable that we want to recode and uh, then uh, it kind of takes a vector of variables, uh, a, a vector of old levels and uh, the new level that we want to code them into. So for example, we want to code no answer, don't know an other party into other. We want to code strong Republican and not strong Republican as Republicans uh, and so on. So not strong Democrat and strong Democrat as Democrats. So, so we can just pass on uh, the vector of old levels into uh, uh, into a new level and and it uh, kind of works very efficiently uh, so now he, in this case we see that it has now been recorded the variable has been recorded into other republican independent and democrats so that is also another nice trick um, finally we have uh, a function to lump multiple uh, levels together uh, and this is called uh, the factor underscore lump function. The way it works is pretty powerful. Uh, so let's say in this example we had, uh, uh, if you remember, we had multiple religions that a uh, respondent can uh, follow. What uh, this does is uh, in, in its simplest form, it takes the variable that we want uh, uh, for which we want to lump the factors together and uh, that's it. That's that's the simplest form. Uh, what it does is it kind of uh, retains the level that has the maximum or the highest number of counts and lumps all of the factors together into a default of others. So here we see that all the you know multiple religions that were uh, there in the in the original level, everything has been clubbed into uh, the uh, factor other the, the new level of other and uh, the highest uh, level the highest count uh, was for the level protestant and that is the only other level that has remained from the older uh, order uh, here we can also specify the number of groups that we want so the total number of groups that we would want uh, the new variable to have so we have uh, we are mutating the new variable religion and we are specifying uh, the original variable and we want five uh, we want this new variable to have five levels. So it retains the top four, uh, sorry, it retains the top uh, five uh, levels in the original level and lumps the rest of the level into the other category. So this is also very useful. We can just say village n equals 10 or n equals three or whatever uh, the total number of levels that we want and, and it kind of uh, uh, 
clubs all the i mean it orders the levels in a decreasing order of their counts and uh, lumps the rest of the uh, or lumps the levels that do not have a sufficient number of cases uh, we can also specify the minimum number of cases that are needed to club uh, so here we we use the function fct underscore lump underscore min um, and uh, the first argument again is uh, sorry about that uh, the first argument here again is uh, religion and we are saying that the minimum number of cases uh, should be a hundred so if anything uh, that is below 100 should be clubbed into this other category anything above 100 here we see for example inter uh, non uh, denominational is uh, has 109 cases uh, that was not clubbed into the other category but other uh, religions were converted or lumped together into uh, this other category uh, so that's that's uh, that's it about uh, the lump function. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, it, it does provide a couple of uh, different uh, options. Uh, so for example, uh, it can provide us an option of the total number of levels that we want. Uh, it can, uh, it gives us an option of the minimum number of cases uh, that uh, below which uh, the levels should be clubbed and so on and so forth. Uh, so, so that's really uh, useful when we want to do different types of clubbings uh, of levels. So those are the three uh, critical functions to uh, like collapse or modify the levels. The first one was factor underscore uh, record. The second one was factor underscore uh, collapse. And the third one was factor underscore lump. Um, these three, I think, should take care of most of our uh, factor modification needs. Uh, so to say, and we will do more of these exercises to kind of uh, go through them. Any any questions so far? Uh, no, no. All right. So let's let's start with the exercises and and see how uh, they go. So the first. Uh, can, can you see the exercise screen? Uh, I'm just seeing the exercises. Uh, yeah, the, all right. Yeah. The uh, problem one, right? You, uh, do, do, you see, do you see problem one? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, awesome. All right, so that this is the first uh, uh, exercise in the in the chapter which uh, asks us to explore the distribution of our income and uh, says what makes the default bar chart hard to understand how could you improve the plot uh, so this is pretty uh, uh, in its in its crudest crudest form we just pass on the x uh, uh, variable as our income and draw a bar chart and we see that uh, you know there are a lot of levels and uh, all of these levels are jumbled together. So it's really difficult to distinguish between uh, these levels. Uh, to make this bar chart a little better, what we can do is to use the factor underscore lump function that we just saw and say that, okay, we want uh, to record or we want to lump the R income variable uh, and we want five uh, uh, levels. Uh, so what it does is it, it takes the top five uh, levels and then lumps all the rest of the levels into a sixth category of others. Uh, so this is this is really uh, helpful. So it, it here we see that uh, so one two three four five these these were the five variables with the highest count and the rest of the figures are, or the rest of the levels have been clubbed into uh, this other category. Uh, so this is a really easy way to uh, kind of make your bar charts or any sort of uh, graph really uh, much more cleaner uh, in a few steps or, or with, with very few lines of code. Uh, the next uh, problem in the first uh, exercise was, uh, you know, what is the most common religion in this survey? What's the most common party ID? Uh, that's really straightforward. So we uh, can just take a count of religion and uh, uh, 
uh, arranged by uh, in, a, in a descending order. Uh, so here we see that Protestant is the most common religion, most common religion in the in the in the survey. And in a similar way, we also see that independent is the most common party uh, followed by most participants in the survey. Uh, now there are there are a couple of different ways we could have. Uh, approached this problem uh, instead of using a range uh, like a, a combination of count and arrange we could have simply done uh, fct underscore lump uh, and not passed on any arguments uh, as we saw in the in the first uh, example uh, if we just use uh, fct underscore lump uh, yeah it it kind of creates these two new levels the first level is 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 the one that has the highest uh uh count so that's that's another way to use lump to uh, identify the highest number of uh, participants in a religion and uh, the most uh number of participants in a in a political party uh so that's problem 2 Problem three was, uh, you know, which religion does uh, denomination apply to? How can you find out with a table? How can you find that out with a visualization? So, uh, so I actually looked into the data, and uh, I'm not sure if you have seen the data or not, but the norm has a lot of not applicable cases. So. Uh, what I did was I filtered out the cases of cases where denom is not applicable and then took account of religion, which showed us that, uh, you know, most of the religions do not have a denom. So which religion does denom apply to? So, so it doesn't apply to most of the religions. It just applies to uh, mostly, Chris, mostly Protestants. Uh, and also some some cases of Christian other and no answers are also there. But I think we can we can pretty much say that it it mostly applies to uh, the Protestant religion. Uh, and uh, a similar way to do that use, using a visualization is to again filter it uh, to eliminate the uh, the not applicable cases, and then plot a bar chart and it, it shows us kind of the same thing that uh, you know it it applies generally to the Protestant uh, religion. Uh, the next, uh, in the next section, 15.4, the first problem was, uh, there are some highly suspiciously high, uh, numbers in TV hours. Is this a uh, mean and good summary? Uh, so yeah, I mean, we, we did, I, I kind of did a descriptive, uh, uh take a, took a descriptive look. I again, uh, removed the not, uh, or missing, uh, uh, number of cases from TV hours, and then I categorized this variable into, you know, cases where uh, number of TV hours was more than 50, or number of TV hours was between 15 and 20, uh, or number of TV hours was less than 15. Uh, so we see that okay, most of the in most of the cases, the number of TV hours is 15 or less, but then there are some very high uh, cases. So, so there are about 27 cases where number of TV hours is more than 20 hours a day. Which is crazy, and then there are uh, about nineteen cases where uh, number of uh, TV hours in a day watched is uh, between sixteen to nineteen. So that's that's really, I mean, these are really outliers, uh, and uh, as we know that the mean is very sensitive to outliers, uh, mean would not be a good summary uh, for TV hours. We should probably be looking at uh, the median or the inter quartile range to kind of summarize uh, the data in, data in this case. Uh, the next problem was uh, to identify, so for each factor in uh, GSS underscore cat, identify whether the order of levels is arbitrary or principled. So the first step here is to identify uh, the order, so identify all the factor, factor uh, variables. Uh, so this, I found a really ni nice code in the R4DS solution, uh, which is to use the keep function. So keep GSS underscore cat is factor. So this kind of, uh, it's, it's, it works in a very similar way to select in tidyverse. And it, um, it, it kind of uh, selects the variables that are factor in the data set. And then we can use the pipe operator and just retain the names. Uh, of 
the variables that were selected in the earlier step. So we see that uh, marital, race, our income, party ID, religion, and denomination are uh, the variables that are factor variables. And then in order to identify if they are arbitrary or principled, we can uh, just use the levels uh, function. So we say levels GSS cat marshall, sorry, uh, GSS cat marital. And uh, we see that okay, it's it's uh, the order is no answer, never married, separated, divorced, widowed, and married. So we see that it ranges. It it starts. The order is uh, starting from never married to and going towards married. So there's some uh, sense of order or some some sense of principle there. Uh, similarly, uh, race has you know other black, white, or not applicable. So maybe in this case we might want to move uh the other or reorder it in such in such a way that the other comes after white or 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 something like that so we can we can do that uh we have our income which is also a categorical variable here we see that uh it's no answer don't know refused and then it's twenty five thousand or more twenty thousand or twenty thousand to twenty five thousand fifteen thousand to twenty thousand so it's it's generally in a decreasing order starting from twenty five thousand to uh, less than a thousand dollars, but then we also see that there are, you know, these these three uh, no answer, don't know, and refused uh, that appear towards the beginning of the levels, and then not applicable, which appears towards the end of the le level. So we might want to uh, kind of change the order of the variables a little bit, and as we remember, uh, a good way to do that is to use uh, factor underscore uh, reorder uh, or factor underscore, yeah, factor underscore reorder could be a good way to do that. Or um, there was the second function was also useful, you can see. Um, yeah, factor underscore relevel could also be a good way to do that uh, by just specifying, uh, <laughs> By just specifying one uh, uh, one level, we can we can kind of change its order from you know towards the beginning to towards the end. That's uh, yeah. So, so I, I mean, we can look at other variables like that and, and decide to change their levels. But I think we all get the idea. Uh, the next question in this exercise was. Uh, why did moving not applicable to the front of the levels move it to the bottom of the plot? So this uh, uh, kind of uh, is referring to this chunk of code in the book where uh, we use the factor underscore relevel function. And when we plotted uh, the graph, we saw that, okay, not applicable is appearing towards the bottom of the uh, code. Now, if you remember the if you remember the uh, order of uh, not applicable and no answer that was inherent in the original variable, we see that uh, you know not applicable is at the end of the uh, levels, and, uh, and and you know no answer, don't know, and refused are at the beginning of the level. So what would happen when we use factor underscore relevel? Uh, it would bring this not applicable to the top. It would it would kind of change the order of not applicable and it would place it in the front of the levels uh, and this is exactly what is happening and that's why we see that uh, the graph is now starting from not applicable and then it has no answer don't know refused uh, and then uh, starts decreasing from you know twenty five thousand uh, dollars to less than one thousand dollars as we as we saw in the uh, in the in the levels. Uh, yeah, I think that was that. Uh, the last section of the exercise, uh, the first problem asks about uh, how have the proportions of people identifying as Democrats, Republican, and independent changed over time? So for this, what we need to do is to uh, plot uh, the proportion of people who are Republicans, independent, or Democrats over time. So we have a variable called year. Uh, and uh, if you remember the uh, political party variable, we would see that, uh, sorry, uh, we would see that there is a lot of uh, different uh, 
levels. So we have Republican strong, we have not strong Republican, we have independent near Republican and so on. So the first step in this exercise should be to uh, uh, kind of club all the different levels into three main categories of dependent, uh, sorry, uh, of Democrat, Republican and independent. And we uh, saw earlier that factor underscore collapse is a good way to do that. Uh, so we use that uh, function to club everything that has anything to do with. So every every person who is either an independent, near Democrat, or not strong Democrat, or a strong Democrat into Democrats, and similarly into Republicans and independents. Uh, then we uh, kind of uh, filter uh, out cases of you know no answer or. Uh, don't know or others and things like that so we, we filter them out and uh, then we uh, group uh, the data set by year and party id uh, summarize uh, to take the count uh, create a variable for proportions and then plot it which kind of shows us the trends of uh, you know how how uh, how uh, uh, the proportion of Democrats, Republicans, and Independents have changed. So we see that uh, from 2000, I don't know, six, seven onwards, I think there's a there's a, a big uh, increase in the proportion of Democrats. There's a corresponding decrease in the proportion of people who identified as Republicans. And then from 2007, eight onwards, we see that there's a gradual increase in the proportion of people who identify as independents. Uh, so that was problem one. Uh, second is how could you collapse our income into a small set of categories? So there, there are like multiple ways to do that. Uh, First, let's look at the R income. Uh, we all remember that it started with no answer, don't know, refused, and then decreased from $25,000 to less than $1,000. Uh, so the first idea is to use factor underscore lump and provide a minimum number of uh, levels that we want. So here I say that, okay, use factor lump, and I want eight groups. Uh, I want to retain eight of the original groups. So what it does is it uh, retains the the eight levels that have the highest number of cases, and then uh, creates a ninth level of others where it like clubs in all the remaining uh, cases. So that's how factor lump uh, can be used. Uh, another way, as we saw, was to use factor underscore lump underscore min, where uh, we use the uh, where we kind of say that, okay, uh, anything that is less, that has any any category or any level that has less than 500 cases should be created into or lumped into a new variable. And that's what it does. We, we don't see anything that has less than 500 cases here. Everything that had a less than 500 cases was clubbed into this other category. Uh, finally, we also have uh, the factor uh, recode function, which uh, uh, which can be used uh, by uh, kind of repeating uh, multiple old levels into a single new levels. For example, if we want to recode everybody who has an uh, income of less than $10,000 uh, into a new category called less than 10,000. So that's what we do. In the new level, we keep on repeating less than $10,000. And uh, in the older variables, in the older kind of uh, levels, we specify all the ranges starting from 8,000 to 9,999, all the way to less than 1,000. So each of these older levels will now be categorized as, uh, or, or classified as less than 10,000. And that is exactly what it does. So we have a new category called less than 10,000 and all the other categories or all the other levels that we have not specified here, they kind of uh, were they they uh, remained untouched and, and were reproduced as they are. So yeah, I mean uh, this this I think is the end of the chapter. I believe uh, yeah, that's the last exercise. But uh, what we see here is we have a lot of uh, different uh, ways to work around uh, you know reordering factors or collapsing different levels. Uh, 
uh, which can uh, come really ha uh, handy uh, when we do uh, data files. So that's it from my side. Thank you for the opportunity to work on this. And any questions or any, any thoughts, suggestions? Uh, no, thank you, Arnab, so so much. Uh, I don't work a lot with factors, so uh, yeah, nothing. I have so much to learn now. Yeah, I yeah, I I kind of I never learned factor this systematically. I uh, I mean the the way I approach. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I I kind of worked a lot on. Uh, I mean, learned a lot from uh, Stack Overflow and uh, you know online uh, blogs and so. And my foundation, I mean, my foundations were not, were not as strong, but this uh, chapter really helped in uh, kind of uh, giving a overlay of, you know, what are the different uh, functions, what are the different ways we can uh, play with factors. So this was really useful. Yeah, definitely. I just had to ask everyone, like, is anybody up for presenting the next time? Okay, uh, I can do the Hi, next Aditi. chapter. Thank Dayton. you so much for. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Aditi. I won't be able to do it uh, next week. And uh, yeah, as you yeah, people yeah. were telling, uh, factors is is a, it, it's a different topic for me. Even I have not worked on it. And uh, thank you, Arna, for making it easier and of course uh, very approachable. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I'll do the next chapter then next week. Thank you so much. Thanks. Uh, is the next chapter on... What is the next chapter? Is it on strings? I think it's date times. No, we finished oh. Uh, strings. Oh, yeah. We, we did finish. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is dates and times. Very exciting. All right. Yeah, I don't think I'll forget strings after the backslashes that we tried. <laughs> All right. This sounds... Exciting. Well, thanks so much, everyone. Have a great week. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.